I call you Xenia Sage. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, pleased to take a call on the Kaikoura Tetai or Marokura Marine Management Bill. And as with the government's um, sub Antarctic marine protection legislation, the Green Party is supporting the bill because this is a step forward for marine protection, but it's not going far enough. And we're also supporting it to, of course, keep faith with the community representatives in the Kaikoura Coastal Marine Guardians who worked very hard for more than seven years to develop the proposals. And it's to them that we pay tribute because it was their initiative to develop some protection for the Kaikoura coastline, not a government initiative that has led us to this bill. And their work was in response to an early proposal for marine protection by Forest and Bird around the Kaikoura Peninsula in the late 80s, early 1990s. So it has been a long time coming in getting some protection for this dramatic stretch of coast. And Reno Turekatani talked about um, fishing as a child. It has been the community's concern too. The reduction in uh, shellfish, the decline in the recreational fishery that's led people to propose um, some fishing regulations that are specific to the area which the bill uh, includes, and also these two, um, three Mataitai reserves and two Taiapure to recognise Ngāti Kuri's strong uh, customary uh, interests in the area and uh, their desire to protect those cultural uh, values. But we've had national members, uh, including the Minister, suggesting that the oceans are the new frontier for conservation and that national is somehow the saviour of the marine environment with this legislation. Nothing could be farther from the truth because, as my colleague Gareth Hughes um, spoke about, it is this national government which is opening up our oceans to major uh, resource exploitation, to very risky oil drilling, encouraging seabed mining, and that is directly at odds with our marine protection. So in this bill, it's not that ambitious because it is protecting uh, an area in the Hikarangi Marine Reserve, sizeable though it is, 10,000 um, hectares, there is not a great deal of fishing pressure in that area. In fact, if you look at the regulatory impact statement, there's an estimate that the annual impact of displaced fishing activity will only be $1.1 million. So it's not um, a significant area for commercial fishing. And yet, Kaikoura is a really important area for marine tourism, as others have said, generates $134 million annually, locally, and it's part of a much bigger marine tourism industry. 50% of the international visitors to New Zealand take part in marine tourism. They spend $1.6 billion while they are here. If National was genuinely interested in having an economy which recognised that it depends on a healthy environment, it would be doing much more in this bill to protect our marine environment on which that marine tourism depends, on which amenity values um, of New Zealanders depend, because so many Kiwis love going to the coast, particularly the Kaikoura coast. But National's not interested in genuine, um, solid marine protection, because the sanctuary that this uh, bill establishes will still allow seismic surveying. And to correct the member for Waitaki, seismic surveying can have quite substantial impacts on marine mammals, which is why there is a code of practice. But the fact that seismic surveys, even though they're not the worst sort, can occur in the whale sanctuary um, shows that there are some quite considerable flaws in the bill. Another of the flaws is the very limited area of the rocky coast that the Hikarangi Marine Reserve covers, only two kilometres. Its very jaggy, jagged boundaries will create quite significant enforcement difficulties. It will create edge effects, and those boundaries have been um, criticised by both Forest and Bird and the New Zealand Marine Sciences Society. Another of the flaws of the bill is that National and its stingy funding of conservation is not giving DOC any more money to help with enforcement and compliance of the marine reserve boundaries, and that's expected to cost about $100,000 a year. So, Mr Speaker, we look forward to submissions, and we hope through the select committee process to be able to improve the bill. 
call Maggie Barry. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise to speak to the Kaikoura Marine Management Bill at its first reading. And